Hi everybody, it's Courtney and welcome back. Today's theme is interactive cards. I'm gonna be using the Little Agenda Trains stamp set by Mama Elephant. You can see these are tiny little images and I am going to try my best to make an interactive card, which I'm sure you guys know is not exactly uh, something that I'm good at. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by creating my little train. And this is a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I am stamping each of these images twice just to figure out which one comes out better because I'm not doing any um, measuring or I didn't use a T-square ruler or anything. I'm kind of just eyeballing it. And I want to create my train. So I'm taking a bunch of the images from the stamp set. There's also that little tiny connector piece for each little part of the train that you can connect it together. And I'm stamping with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 because I am going to be Copic coloring these images. Now, as I'm doing my stamping, I'm realizing that the top one is coming out a lot better <laughs> than the bottom one. Um, the great thing about this stamp set and I've had this in my stash for like two years, I think. I purchased it the first time I did a Christmas card series and I never ended up using it. And I never ended up using it last year. So we're finally using it. The great thing about it though, is you don't need to do any masking. If you stamp it the way you're supposed to stamp it, you don't have to do any masking for this at all. So I'm putting little presents in some of the uh, train cars and the balloon sticking out and I don't have to do any masking at all. Now, how do I, I do have to do a little bit because I'm going to put a little conductor in the train. Now this is optional. So I'm going to obviously use the top image because that came out much better and much straighter. And I'm just gonna take some post-it note tape to mask off the sides of the little window. And then I can stamp out my little conductor there. You're really only gonna see his little face, but I fi figured that will fill that area up nicely. Now, as far as the coloring, these images are tiny, very tiny, much tinier than I'm used to. I'm used to using four color blends when I color. I had a hard time getting in three colors in some of these areas, but I am gonna show you a little bit of the coloring because I know when I leave it out, some guys, some of you guys want to see it. So I didn't show it all of it, all of it to you guys, but I'll show you some. So I'm gonna use some grays for the train itself, most of the train anyway. I'm gonna work on a center light source because it's just easiest. So I'm adding a little bit of shading on either side. Now I am using my cool grays, which I find blend really nicely. Normally I like to saturate the paper first and then go in with my darkest color. I'm not bothering to do that for any of these. Number one, they're small images. It doesn't matter if I get a perfect blend because it's such a small area that you're probably not gonna be able to tell anyway, and the grays blend good anyway. So I'm gonna go all the way down to a C1 for my highlight color, and I use the same color combination for the rest of the train cars. Now for the wheels, uh, I guess they'd be wheels, right? I guess they're wheels, we're calling them wheels. I'm going to also use the cool grays, but I'm also going to bring in the black marker. Now, how I like to color wheels is I like to pick a side, which I'm picking the left side. So for the outer edge of the wheel, I'll go to the left side. And for the right side of the wheel, I'm going to shade it still to the left, but it will be shaded on the opening of the wheel, if that makes any sense at all. So you're basically making a C, a big C and then a little backward C. Then I'm gonna just blend that out with the C7 and C5. Now I'm gonna add my colors. So I'm gonna use a green combination, kind of a golden yellow combination and a red combination. And I'm just gonna show you the combinations that I used. I'm not gonna show you the coloring of all of this because it is pretty repetitive. And to be honest with you, the little presents that are sticking out of the train, I didn't do any shading at all. I just went in with each of the mid-tone colors for these combinations and I colored them in solid. I'll add a few white gel pen details, but otherwise for a small area like that, you're really not going to be able to tell. So for the balloons, I am 
like I said, using the three different color combinations. This is just the easy way to show you the combinations that I used. I'm doing the shading from the base of each of the balloons and working my way up. I should have colored the golden yellow one first before going in with the red, just because like I say before, once the red kind of gets where in places that you don't want it to go, there's really no taking that back. So you wanna be very careful with any red combinations that you are using. So once my coloring was done, like I said, I did add a few white gel pen details, just adding some highlights to kind of just some random areas. And if you're not using multiple colors or your shading's not, or your shading is minimal or maybe didn't turn out so well, adding some just details with a white gel pen will really boost that up. I went ahead and stuck this in my scan and cut and cut out the image. I did have to take a pen just to kind of fix up these little connector pieces just because my scan and cut wasn't recognizing them. Now for the assembly of the card, I'm taking another panel of the Nina Solar White. I ended up cutting off a quarter of an inch on the bottom. I'm going to line that up on my work surface and take two pieces of the post-it note tape to run that down the bottom. I'm just masking off the top. I'm going to do some ink blending for the sky, but I'm going to leave the bottom white. You can certainly do add as many details as you want, but like I said, interactive cards, I love them. I love watching people make them. I love seeing them on social media and on YouTube, but I am not good at it. <laughs> I don't really have the patience to make anything really too complex, so I, I'm keeping it nice and simple. So for my sky, I am using some broken china, faded jeans, and chipped sapphire. I'm doing my blending the same way as I always do. I'm adding my base layer of color, just kind of getting some color down on the paper to kind of map out where each color is going to be. Once I reach the top, then I'm going to work in reverse. And this is where I'm gonna be adding more ink and making sure that my colors actually blend. The first time around, as I worked my way up, I'm really not concerned with them blending. I'm just getting my color down. And the oxides blend similar to, you know, Copics and things like that. The more saturated the paper is, the better they're going to blend. Now keep in mind that they sit on top of the paper, which is why they blend so nicely, but they also stay wet for a very long time. So once I was happy with the blend, I went ahead and removed my post-it note tape and where I guess you could call it snow because we're leaving it white. So it's gonna be snow. I'm gonna stamp the train tracks. I'm just stamping with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Didn't do a great job lining this up, but we'll fix that in a minute. I trimmed this down. Now, what I am going to do here, I'm just cleaning up my work surface because I stamped off and I have put my panels upside down and ended up with ink smudges. So make sure you clean your work surface. I am cutting off the train tracks, but I'm also cutting off a quarter of an inch. I'm not gonna use that quarter of an inch. There's gonna be a gap. Once I place this on my card base, there's gonna be a gap between the train tracks and the sky. So I really hated the train tracks. It was a little too messy for me. So I ended up restamping them on just another scrap piece of cardstock here and trimmed off the end because that's all we really need. As long as we have a gap and you'll see why in just a minute, our train is gonna move, <laughs> kind of move, sort of. So next I can align everything up. Now I need to add foam tape to the back of the train tracks as well as the sky. But when you do this, you wanna make sure that you're leaving a little bit of a gap where you start to add your foam tape. So whatever part of that panel is closest to the gap that we're creating, you wanna add, you wanna leave a little bit of space. You don't wanna put your foam tape directly up to the edge. So I'm gonna line up the entire back of the sky and I did have to cut my foam tape down a little bit for the train tracks, but once again, I'm putting it closest to the bottom. So it will leave that little bit of a gap. Now I can line everything up and how my pieces are going to move is I'm going to use pennies. So I'm using two pennies here. If it's a smaller image, you really only need one. I'm going to take off the foam tape for just my larger piece, so the sky. I can line that up onto my card base, and then I'm going to line my pennies up. You wanna make sure that your pennies, or whatever coin you're using, whatever 
I know MFT sells little things that you can use, but I don't have them. So I'm using pennies. This is the old school way. I'm making sure that my pennies stay hidden behind the two sections that I'm putting this under. I'm going to line those up, leave them there. Then I can adhere my train tracks. Again, making sure that the foam tape is on the bottom, that gap is next to the pennies. So this way the pennies have the ability to move. Next, I'm going to take two itty bitty pieces of foam tape and adhere those down to my pennies. This is going to be what sticks my little train to the pennies. The pennies are what's going to move, but the foam tape is obviously what's going to stick my train to the pennies. So next I can line up my train, stick that down, and you can see that this slides nicely. So nicely that I didn't even think about it's going to slide right off the card completely. I don't have anything blocking that in. So I decided to stamp out, there's a little, another little conductor that is part of the stamp set as well as a little, a little Santa. And I figured in my mind, I was going to put one on either side that would block in the train so that it can't continue to move on or off the card, I should say. So I went ahead and stamped those out and I colored those off camera and fussy cut those. Then I realized that if I put these on either side, my train doesn't really have all that much room to move. <laughs> so is it really an interactive card if your interactive piece doesn't move? <laughs> so I decided to leave the conductor off, but I am going to adhere my Santa Claus. So I'm putting a little piece of foam tape in that gap and then stick my Santa Claus on the, on the left-hand side. So at least it won't go off the page on the left side. Then I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with the other side. So I ended up putting a strip of cardstock. It was a that gap that we had cut out. I'm using that strip. And I'm just going to put just a tiny bit of it showing on the right hand side. And that will act as kind of like a stopper. You're not, it's not really going to be all that visible because it's white on white. And then I can just fold that over and stick that down to the inside of my card. Now you can add a sentiment to this. Had I had a sentiment that actually matched the stamp set that fit on this little strip, it probably would have worked out nicely, but I don't have one. So we're just going to have a strip of paper in the inside. This is the best I can do with an interactive cart. <laughs> this is why I don't make them very often. So I stuck that down with some Tabamano multi-glue. And like I said, you can cover that up, add a sentiment, add more additional images on the inside, however you want to kind of disguise that. So for my sentiment, I'm using a sentiment from the Create and Inspire stamp set, the North Pole. I tested out my ink blended background just to make sure that it was dry enough where my embossing powder was not going to stick to areas I don't want it to stick to. Treated that with my anti-static tool and stamped this out with some embossing ink by Simon Says Stamp. Sprinkled on my white embossing powder and heat set that. Now I made sure my heat gun was really heated up and you can see that I'm kind of putting it away from the paper every couple of seconds to make sure that I don't overheat this because I already have it stuck down with foam tape and the more heat I add, the more it will kind of melt that adhesive and my panel will come away from my card base. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish off the card with a white gel pen, just adding little dots all over the background. And this will kind of look like falling snow. Now it looks plain. I was going to add little trees in the background, but I was afraid that my tree, my train was going to get stuck on any additional images that I added. If I were to make this card again, I would definitely build more of a scene in the background, but it is what it is. It'll go to a child probably who will hopefully appreciate it. So today's collaboration is with Marie, who is also making an interactive card. I will leave a link to her video below, as well as the supplies used in today's card. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.